Well, after my uh, job, temporary job, moving around at American Great American Real Estate Service with Mary, I moved on, moved a couple assignments over to Van Star for two months. They had to work there. Every morning it was a mile and a half walk from the bus stop, rain, cold, and heat. Never missed a day, nor late one time. Revamped the files. They extended the time because of my filing skill. No full time after, other than off of that. And they found I was the most skilled person they'd ever had working in the whole building. That's what you have to do as a Christian, despite the fact that you're probably not going to get full time. The associates filing one month. My co-worker announced that she was royalty and the wife of the ambassador to some country in Africa. So it was beneath her dignity, dignity to do manual labor. So I had, she refused to get her own work. So I brought her work to her because she were, we were supposed to work together on the same project and I was made responsible for what she did. I'm just a temp. I had to redo her work all the time. She filed everything backwards. One time she put an entire file drawer backwards. She took me, she, it took me nearly an hour to redo the damage. She caught me doing this and became incensed. She quit and said it was because of me. It was investigated and I was not dismissed. Amazing. After she left my production Zoom, when we ran out of space, I set up a user-friendly archive file room using banker boxes. When they discovered I was computer literate, they also had me do some work at the keyboard. So the assignment ended on good terms. Most of the time, you just move on. That's the Christian life. I had opportunities to share my faith. Most of the time, I wasn't able to do that. ADT, I worked for uh, one month. Same kind of scenario. IBM, I worked for a week. Some, something about me really turned my supervisor off the moment I opened my mouth. I suspect it was my New York accent because she kept calling me a Yankee. Wow. Now you can say and do anything to a middle-aged uh, guy like me, a man, but you, you turn one little subtle thing towards somebody else in the office and you're out. She was miserable to me that a man who worked with her kept apologizing for the way I was treated. I'm sorry that's the way she is. So I went to Sharp, the Bar Association, Bart Nashman, K KMPG, Pete Marwick, Seven Days, and Lights Out. Yes, they were kind of like going on some kind of a company holiday, and they didn't invite me. They just locked me out inside the building. I had to find, finally, I, I was locked inside at printing time. They turned out the lights. I was left in total darkness, locked in the office. I felt my way around the desk to gather my belongings. I had to feel my way out of the file room and then out of the building. There were no windows to give me some light to see. I fought panic as every door I, lo I tried was locked. I bumped my way into several dead ends, but kept my composure. I felt my, I finally felt the doorway on what seemed to be an exterior wall. I located the doorknob. It led to the outside stairway and a sigh of relief. <clears throat> Interestingly, I called the temp agency to tell them the assignment is over, and she asked why. I said, because they turned the lights out, locked me in the building. There was silence on the other end of the phone. No apology. It's amazing how little people care for one another, especially strangers. Well, ADT, one month. Okay. Some experienced soldering and electronic schematics, so I enjoyed this work, but when it was over, it was over. Kodak, the image bank, six months filing. Okay, here we go. Now I had some opportunity. It's always bizarre, though. Isn't the world bizarre? Keep it to yourself. I found a friend in tech support. Martin was very interested in discussing the Bible and the Christian faith. We kept in his, in his office. But once in a while, a Mormon kid would come in and butt into the conversation. He made emotional and unsupportable rebuttals to whatever we were discussing, often way off topic. That's how they're taught to argue. Don't stay on target. Just throw ammunition at you. Show how impressive you, you've learned your argumentation, which isn't logical at all. He was quick to get upset. I had done my homework on these issues and responded objectively with normative rules of language, context, and logic from specific passages in the Bible. This served only to inflame him, so my conversations with Martin sadly ceased. These conversations did not go as unnoticed as I thought. I found myself surrounded with all kinds of emotional agenda after this from others, especially Millie, who went to a Church of Christ. She was on the attack every morning. She would start the attack, but every time I tried to focus on the actual words of whatever text she was throwing at me, she would go over the deep end and get emotional and condemn me for my faith. I also met a woman who was a staunch Calvinist, 
She came over several times to my cube to initiate conversation about her theological point of view. I produced a study I had done earlier for the Calvinist gentleman at Herman Miller, and he took it. She took it. She never read it through, though, but instead gave it to her pastor. I heard nothing back from either him either. Interesting. They don't know what to believe. So they bring the studies to the pastor. Interesting when you dialogue about such matters, it all boils down to who is going to do your thinking for you, someone else or yourself. God is not going to judge others for what you believe. He's going to judge you. So the lady Calvinist no longer came by because I kept bringing up the detailed study in Calvinism to her, and she had no answer because she wouldn't investigate it further. <clears throat> she said she was satisfied with what her pastor told her to believe. Wow. No one was actually willing to sit down after work and go over what they were talking about objectively. Okay. I learned to file pretty well, so I got days because of that drudgery. But I learned the skill set pretty well, and I was creative and setting up new filing system. Interesting, uh, when I worked at the Associates for a day, I took my hat off. I was put at the desk where the sun glared directly into my eyes. They would not permit me to adjust the blinds. Everybody else was sitting at a different row when the sun wasn't hitting him in the eyes. But the supervisor did grant me permission to use a baseball cap so I could see the screen without being blinded. No one would help me with instruction on how to do the work. So I floundered all that morning. When your senior manager came and saw the cap, I was immediately dismissed and sent home for, for wearing the cap. Just unbelievable. Cigna, two days. Dismissed again just because I worked there before. EMC, Sears, the Associates, two time clocks, four days. All kinds of nonsense problems. They had nothing to do with my faith. Went to work to Avial. I was a... a Mentor, a trash data entry business casual two days. I was told to wear a business casual clothes for a data entry assignment. Data entry turned into a picking of trash in an overgrown backyard and cigarette butts from sideway cracks in business casual dress and a 100 degree temperature outside. Take it or leave it. I had to find my own tools to work with. All I brought with me was tacky finger. I used to use tacky finger all the time when you're, you're trying to go through documents and so on. Liberty Mutual. Equifax, GTE Supply, Hunting Down, People to Talk to My Faith About, it. Foundation Houses, Gentel, Alston Care, Temporary. Oh, yeah, that was interesting. Was that, the, yeah, there was no place for me to do my work. We don't have a place for you, sir. So they jammed an ancient wood desk with no drawer bottoms into the entrance to the linen closet. I had to climb over the desk into the closet and sit in an old broken wooden swivel. People came to the closet for linens, which I handed out in between doing the clerical work. So I had a clerical work and hand out linens. You just got to be ready, able to do anything, as you are ready to do anything to share your faith with Jesus about Jesus. <clears throat> GTE, Iron Mountain, Motorola, Greenwich, Allstate, more business forms. Carson Brooks, transcription from a dictating machine, one day, Kelly, Kelly Payroll, two months part-time, Bank One, that was part-time, yeah, I couldn't, couldn't make ends meet there, Bank One for two months, general office work, repent or you'll likewise perish, so here's the Bank One, oh, I remember this, I remember this, worked for Bank One, it was really weird, General office for two months. The work was a piece of cake. Mo mostly simple data entry and some sorting and filing, which I, by the way, 20 some odd years, and now in my late 40s, uh, I didn't have any of these data skills. I had to learn them as I went. The work was a piece of cake, mostly simple data entry, some sorting and filing. I got the work done rapidly, so they gave me the time-consuming task of printing out signature cards when I was done with the regular work. Now remember, if I'm witnessing as Jesus' uh, representative here as a, uh, for him, you may not get a chance to share your faith, but you share your faith, you share what kind of a person you are by the work that you do. 
It took four to five minutes to print each card because the computer system was so slow. So I went over to a location with three unoccupied PCs and turned them all on and started printing out a card every 30 seconds instead of four to five minutes. That was fun, but it really freaked out a few folks. The assignment ended, but they transferred me over to another department. They couldn't believe I got the work done so fast. A really young lady started to train me, but she spoke up a form of English that was so incomprehensible that I couldn't do the job. I, didn't, I don't think I heard a single verb nor a single complete word spoken. I noticed that she spoke a, a slower, more comprehensible dialect with others. It's a young thing, so she purposely did not teach me so that I couldn't learn the task because she didn't want me around because there was a bunch of young people in the office. That happens. Well, repent or you will likewise perish. The job at Bank One was in downtown Dallas, Texas. I took the express commuter bus home from a park in Dallas every day. Every evening there were preachers in the park yelling out their theology, telling everyone to repent or perish in hell. I hesitated to come up to, to any of them because they were so vociferous. They would come up to you. They didn't invite conversation. There was no eye contact. I wondered what they thought they were doing. Everyone was going to hell. We were all filthy sinners. Yeah, you walk up to that bus stop, you're going to hell. Is that what you do? See, God says, I can't let you in there. You were standing at that bus stop. So one evening, a man with a board strapped on front and back telling me to repent. And the, the, it had that message on the board. Come up to me and looked, came up to me and looked me in the eyes as I waited for the bus. He told me to repent. And I said, of what? He told me I was going to hell. I said, how do you know that? You don't know me. He got nose to nose with me and kept screaming his diatribe. I could have punched him out. It was, I could have called it assault. It was that close. I told him that repent means to change your mind and believe in Jesus, and I'd already done that when I was 17. I felt a hand on my shoulder as the preacher's breath blew on my face. I turned to see a huge Dallas City placeman. He was causing me, accusing me of doing the problem. He told me to stop talking to the preacher. The guy got in front of my face as I was waiting for the bus. He explained that these preachers get a permit and do their thing in the park, and that dialogue with them usually led to violence. Yeah, I could see why. So he was there to keep the peace. He said if I responded again, I was going to jail. I obeyed and went home a free man. Wow. That night I did a study on the word repent, showing that it meant to change your mind and believe in Jesus to save you from your sins. That next evening I attached it to the top of the nearby newspaper stand in the park where they, these guys, these violent guys from Church of Christ were, uh, were uh, talking. And the policeman on duty was watching everyone. It worked. The preacher got my study, but it only served to enrage him further. His points were insane and illogical. I walked to the back of the area to get out of earshot of the policeman. The preacher followed me back, and I stood near his wife and son and turned to ask his wife a question. That seemed to defuse him for the moment. The disciples asked Jesus, I said, what must we do to do the work God requires for eternal life in John chapter 6? And do you know what Jesus' answer was? The pastor remained silent, permitting his wife to answer. She, she asked, be baptized. No, I said. Jesus said, the work of God for eternal life is this. And I paused to believe in the one he has sent. That's it. That's all he said to them. It's simply a moment of faith alone and Christ alone. There was a pause. It seemed I had taken the breath away from everyone around me. I walked back to the bus stop and the preacher followed. His nose touched mine as he yelled at the top of his lungs the same old condemnation to hell story, completely ignoring what I had just said. It got so close I could feel his board touch my knees and his breath on my face. The bus came as the policeman started walking over to us. Thereafter, I walked to another street and picked up the bus before the park. I decided I had made my point and did not need a night or in jail to emphasize the message. Sometimes you don't have to turn into a person who is uh, going to go to jail for the sake of the faith.